चलो गुरहानी भी आज making gold comb soup yeah man right here at the good honey bee yard beautiful caribbean island of trinidad i am hans t yaman and i'm making I boil down with all these old combs here trying to get out the wax so I will strain it out and put in some more wax again and repeat that process until I have all the wax melted and put it to cool all right so exactly so man This is another good bees video coming to you and see the thing is I have over here I'm cutting cutting out all the the wax from these frames here although it might be looking all right but for me it's very old and for the bees too all right so I'm getting rid of all these and as you see they're getting wax moth already so before it the wax moth do too much damage to it and I lose the wax I decide to take this day today and melt them down see how much wax moth we have there already well this has been sitting here for a little while you know maybe about two weeks I didn't, I didn't have the time to get to it so the wax, the wax must decide to get to it for me but nevertheless all of them will get boiled don't yeah man i'll get out all my wax from there all right that is one little step here that i use oh Rigorously boiling they now So it's time to strain it out into something Okay, so I'll catch catch up with you in another video All right, later All the comb have been melted down and I will put these now in the solar extractor over a period of time and get out all the remaining wax out of it. The bees are buzzing all around the house looking and trying to get some of that 
whatever it is. But um, I don't have anything here to get. What I did was I opened the the honey extracting room, and uh, they will go inside there and clean up any remnants of honey that is inside the extractor and things like that. Yeah, man. So let's go and take a look and see if they find it. All the coconuts that I have here is for making coconut oil, natural cold press virgin coconut oil, and then I'll put it in the the other shop to make soap. Let's go over there now and see what them bees are up to. Well, I'm seeing them here. They they know they now found this area. So from the from the mouth here they go in inside the hole there inside the extractor and um, any remnants of honey that was left here they will lick it up I have some dry sugar here and a little bit of liquid in this container so they will come in here and give me an ice cream out in a little bit let me just put this here so they wouldn't drown. Right. They will go down inside that extractor there and clean out anything that it have down inside here. So the whole thing is wet with honey. So rather than I have to wash it out, they will come in here and do a nice job for me. Alright, so that's one way in which I get my place clean. Okay, TTFN. Hello to the Good Honey Bee Yard Workshop. This is one way in which I stimulate the bees to get them going and looking all around for any kind of nectar source and resources and whatever else they, they would need to become more stronger. So uh, I purposely left this um, old comb here to be rendered at this point in time to get the bees on them a little more active. Although it has been here for about two weeks or so. So now that I'm finished with this and the corn is beginning to tassel, then all of that stimulates the bees. Yeah man, to get them going. So I just thought I should mention that little seppi for you. All right, another good bees video from the Good Honey Bee Yard, right here in the beautiful Caribbean island of Trinidad. I am Hans T. Yeman, and check me again, man. I ain't going nowhere, I'm home, I'm walking home. Let's take a look at the tomatoes. Yeah man, tomatoes is looking good, tomatoes. Very nice. Almost ready to pick. Oh boy, look at these here. They need a little assistance. They're getting ripe. Nice and juicy. Yeah, I just taking a little walk in the in the garden to see what need picking. And we have all the okras here. Okra. Just about ready to 
let out flowers and fruits. And across here we have the body. Man, we picking body like that already. Look at these nice, look at these nice body, ne? Hmm? Yeah, man. That can't go wrong at all. The nice one down in the back way. Body for so boy. Yeah man, I just thought I should give you a little look at what's happening here. With the, the patch of body. You're cooking like that, you know. Alright, and then we have the cassava in the back there. We have other things too, you know. Like for instance over here. See how nice this coming up. You will see the fruit around yourself. It'll take a little while again before it's at the floor. Now we have the eggplant here as usual. Beautiful looking flowers, eh? Yeah. A nice little yellow in the middle. I guess these bees will go crazy on this, eh? Yeah, man. We have some peppers, hot peppers, sweet peppers, pimento peppers. All kind of little goodies here and there. Pak choy. Across here we have some seasoning, celery, and sive. Papaya tree. Lettuce. Yeah man, I will put I'll put in a, a lot more stuff inside here. Don't worry yourself. We you have it down real nice. Anything happen, we could get food to eat. Yeah, we do have to depend on the grocery store. Okay, later.
Hello to the good honey beard, beautiful Caribbean island of Trinidad. Yeah man, I'm here once again and this morning I discovered that I have a second wave of poisoning. As you can see the bees are still feeding on this pollen substitute that I have here and what I decide to do is I decide to open up the, the top of the colony and if you notice down inside here there are bees in between the frames and they are doing their job exactly as how I predicted it will go down um, what you notice in here is that I have the brood box with a queen excluder and a super in between here now I have the another inner cover and on top of the inner cover I have this super now it's a little bit disheartening to see what is happening with the, my colonies here and I can come out here and be among the bees just like this you understand it's 8 a.m. right now and um, I'm going to open up all the tops of these colonies here and give them continue to feed them liquid as well as the well I don't have any solid so I'll have to give them that a later date um, so what I did I decided to make this video because you need to know all right so what I did here I opened this colony and started to work already but because I need you to know um, this is what I'm doing I'm putting back on here the second super on this colony with the feeder there and um, I will just put in the liquid feed inside there so that the bees wouldn't um, drown I have all the coconut husk there so they wouldn't drown and I took out one frame to make sure that the, the feeder will be able to fit very good so moving right along let me show you this second colony here and you will see what I'm doing with it okay so let me get you set up here a little bit A minute. Let me just move around and make sure you have a, a good, good enough seat. All right. So I'm taking out the telescopic lid. Taking out the. Oh, you need to see. You see how they're feeding here? Very nicely. They're coming through the hole right here, and they're coming up and getting the saturated sugar saturated with honey in it and they're doing their job that is what I believe probably kept them going until now all right so we'll remove this this inner cover here and you will notice that this super here is nine frames right and it have it have bees coming up there because they need to pass through all those frames to get to the sugar on the top and by doing that they would keep the all the frames free of wax moth you notice what's going on here watch that bees here but the colonies are so weak due to the recent poisoning and the continuing poisoning that I could very well work these bees here without any fear of getting stings. You know these Africanized bees, they love to sting you. Any little chance they get. So I'll make this here. I'll make this here now 10 frames. 
right and make sure they had these space too yeah so they could pass right and with that with that being 10 frames there the next thing i'll do now is i'll put back on the second super and then i'll open up the space i'll shift around the frames so that they will be able to um, i'll be able to put in the the feeder in this case i may have to take out another frame to make the space now so that the, the feed could go in here easily right And this is what I'm going to be doing for all the colonies as we go down the line here. I'll put back on this triangle escape with the solid feed there. So as soon as I do a couple of them, I'll come back from up here. You see I have all the containers there with the liquid feed, right? And I'll start putting on the liquid feed. So that is a little, that is a little sepi there for you. This one here, as you would see, the triangular escape, and you have the feet there, the hole for the bees to pass, and they will come up there and access the feed. So this one is very simple. I don't have much to do here. In fact. What I could do in a case like this, all the extra, the extra frames that I'll be taking out from the other colonies, I could just put in the frames here, right? So that the bees will, but also keep that in check. So as I go down the line, I could always come here and put in the frames. All right, so. That's my plan for this morning. Um, it's January 5th, 2021. And in the video before this, you will see how weak the colonies have dropped down to. So that's my dilemma, folks. That's all part of beekeeping, I guess. This is the part that we don't like. We don't like to encounter this part at all. And you see, I'm not even using no smoke. I don't tell you how weak these colonies are. Let me, just, let me just show you this here. You see, I have the solid feed there. They finish out the liquid feed already. They're coming up through the hole there very nicely to get their feed and to keep themselves going. But it's these, these undesirable events that is taking place here. That is about to get me so upset I'll have to try and regulate that. Don't get upset. Those, those people who feel they're so smart, doing it because they feel they're so smart. But really and truly, what I was say, boy. That is how it goes, eh? Alright, I'll come back to you shortly. So, we're going to continue now. So, put on the liquid feed.
Guys, what's going on? I run out of some of the inner covers, but nevertheless, let's see where it goes. Oh, wait a minute. I have a cover for this one, man. I didn't see it over here. Alright, so put them back like that. And let's hope that this will cause them to recover nicely. I need to get a super to put on top of that one. Okay. I'm coming back to you again. You know. The day coming up real nice today. Okay. Everybody is well fed. And I noticed some of these colonies here are very willing to survive. We have quite a lot of dead bees here. Some of these colonies taking a very, very hard hit. This one here trying to recover, if you notice, that scrubbing, washboarding is very, very encouraging. So the bees are willing to do a lot of stuff to recover, but I don't know how successful they will be. See a dead bee right here. And coming back, a lot of dead bees here as well. All these colonies here are taking a very, very serious hard hit. And as you well know from watching my videos, I can't come around these bees here dressed like this. Otherwise, they're giving me it left, right and center. You see that one running, fly the, the, the screen there already. And I now get a sting in my elbow. So, they're very active in spite of all of this. But usually I wouldn't be able to walk around here like this at all. So I'm hoping that these farmers would wise up. And the flight, flight path I'm looking at over there is still good, you know. So there's still some hope. So I'm finished with the feeding and everything. So I just have to cross my fingers and my toes, my, my eyes and everything and hope that they will survive and I could get something for this season. I remember my season starting up all now, you know. So we have the kudzu coming out in full force. We have the Immortel, which is like a, a backup, give them some nectar, and um, if I give them that little feed there, I'm hoping that they, they could recover nicely, man. And remember, in the previous video, I was telling you the, the corn tassel, and of course this morning you would have seen the bees foraging so nice bringing in pollen look at what's going on here they take all the pollen from that already usually there will be more bees on it you know but I don't know the field force gone so I'm not seeing no bees on these corn tassel here either they take it out already or they're that, they're that weak 
whatever the case is, I just have to praise the Lord for for breath and life and hope that these farmers, you know, would wouldn't be putting all this other insects, insecticide and so on in their crops, man. Oh, boy. This new year hasn't started up very nice for me at all. Right now, I'm on the brink of losing all these colonies. Anyhow. Anyhow, folks. Like and share, subscribe, ring that bell icon. How about a bee trying to sting me here? For those who didn't know, um, I'll appreciate a subscription from you. Ring that bell icon as well, you know. Give a thumbs up, tell a friend. Yeah, man. Thanks very much for watching. And there is still hope. Yeah, there is still hope. All right, laters, TTFN. Do you have no bees coming here this now? Okie dokie. Hans the Yemen. As you see, what went on down to the back there. I don't know what is my next move not right now, but I'll keep you all abreast, let you know what is happening. And I just don't know what to say. All right. So stay tuned. Be safe. Take care of yourself and your bees. And everybody who within your circle. All right. Later. Bye for now.